Transportation Committee meeting to order. We need to discuss or, or approve the minutes from our last meeting of July the 11th, 2017. I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 We got several things to discuss here. I'm just going to take them the way they are on the paper. Uh, discussion regarding the acceptance of Willow Creek Subdivision Road into the county public road system. I see we have Mrs. Uh, Amy Gant here. Mm -hmm. Do you have a presentation that you want to present? Yes, informal, but yes, sir. Okay, that's, okay. that's fine. Just go ahead and okay. put out what you have, and we're going to have Mr. Reed to show what we have. Okay. So... Um, Last time we talked, I came in and asked and showed that there was evidence um, that the county council had approved phase two in 2007, according to the minutes. So um, I did further research and actu actually um, spoke with, I ended up kind of interviewing Mr. Knight because he had, a, his wife got him tickets to go to a concert. Um, maybe I should not tell him. Ms. Gant, <laughs> can you speak into the microphone oh, so we can get you? Anyway, so he could not come, but he gave me a lot of names. And actually, I have two gentlemen who um, came to kind of testify and verify a few facts um, for me. And it's David Hubbard with Hubbard Paving and Wes Galloway, who worked for the county at the time as a county inspector for roads and now works with the thrift organization. So they came on behalf of, of me asking them to come about what the county did at the time of phase one being built um, in Willow Creek. And at that time, Matt Kelly was in charge. Um, I've not been able to get a hold of Jimmy White, and Jimmy White was also very involved, Tom Moxley, and um, Scott Carroll. And I called and left a message with Scott today because he did the original drawings. Somehow, all the material that was put into a file to Mr. Kelly has disappeared, and we can't find it. I went online to get minutes for the roads or transportation committee, and they only went back to 2009. So I had asked Katie, mm -hmm. Katie, if there might be a way or to find out minutes that go back to 2006 and 2007 from transportation, if there, if I have to come up and look in the archives. But that that was not available to, for me to find online. Um, talking about phase one. But I do know that both of these gentlemen were here at the beginning construction of phase one. And we know for a fact that the county had hired county employees to come out to inspect and approve, which they did, uh, this, the road, Twin, Twin View Drive coming in off the state road. Um, they had originally put in um, a double, uh, double black corrugated pipe and that was state approved, but Matt Kelly said it needed to be concrete approved, concrete. So that was torn out to be county approved, which was signed off by Jimmy White, and um, that, that was all documented. Then also it was documented that 120 tons of gravel were brought in on the two, on Comet Drive and, mm, Oh, Co Covey, uh, I can't remember the other name, the two little cul-de-sacs, and there were two compaction tests, and both, um, I, I know that David can, can testify about the compaction tests and the inspections being inspected by the county. So my biggest question is, I can get more information, Ted Moore did all the water lines, and I can get all of this in a packet to you. I did not have a chance to get everybody's interview and all the documents, because like I said, it, there seems to be a document lost black hole where, where this is missing. But all these gentlemen were there, and they were all county employees hired by the county, set out by the county to do the road work on Willow Creek. So my question is, all intentions were this was going to be a county road. There was There's no question about that whatsoever. It's just a case of missing paperwork. Um, at the time, David just told me, Mr. Hubbard, that there was um, an idea to put a light fixture actually um, on the corner of the first cul-de-sac where that corner is, but now there's a house there. 
but Blue Ridge Electric is agreed to put in decorative black lighting, so we can put lights anywhere and anywhere that the county would would like us to if we need to, because we're at a point where Blue Ridge Electric has said, yeah, we'll put those lights in for you. Um, since I talked to you last, sold another lot, um, have some people coming down from Illinois to build. Going to be working with some lenders, obviously trying to get this neighborhood up and going. Um, I was going to let David talk a little bit just about the roads and the quality of the roads because he was out there actually today. Um, and then also anything that Mr. Galloway would like to add just to verify and confirm that these inspectors were actually there and that they did their inspections for county road standards and they were approved. So I'm asking you as a roads committee to take this in and I will get you whatever you need. I, I'm a bulldog. I've just, it's, I keep running to dead ends, but I'm kind of persistent. So I will get you what you need to show you in writing, whatever I need to get from Scott Carroll that did the drawings. Um, it's got to be there somewhere. And also Jimmy White, which might be quite elusive, but like I said, I'm persistent. So I have his wife's telephone number. That might be more, I might have to track him down that way. So I don't know if, um, if you want to come up guys and just kind of tell what you know a little bit about the roads. They've been very gracious to come. I'm very, very grateful to them. So this is David Hubbard of Hubbard Paving. How you doing? Uh, I don't really know where to begin, but I do know that Wes, Larry, and my company was out there and done it two county specs. Uh, the area that she was talking about that failed, it was dug out, stone put in, three inch stone. Compaction test was done same day. Uh, Every inspector that's on a county job gets a copy of every ticket that comes in, uh, asphalt, rock, whatever it may be. And they were given all copies of tickets end of each day, uh, test results. There wasn't a testing firm there because as the road committee, I mean the road department does, if, if myself or the road department doesn't agree with each other, and then we have a testing firm come in, verify what's right or wrong. So everything was good to go on, on both phases. But, uh, I rode through the roads today, and you got another 10, 15 years left in it with the amount of construction that's been going on. Uh, and about every 30, 40 feet, when you get your stone down, there's a test hole dug. See how deep the rock is. And it goes from one side to the other side. Just we just keep on going back and forth to make sure the right depth of rock was there. And as far as I know it, it was all there. So I wasn't asked to haul any more in or anything like that. Uh laying down the asphalt, we always probe it. That's you got two and a quarter, you go about every ten, fifteen feet, be sure two and a quarter inches being plat. And it was. Uh and as far as I know, we had no issues out there on that road. Uh, the grade was one issue. As you come from the first phase into the second phase, that it was more than 10%. I was there when Scott Carroll measured it, the percentage, and I think it was 9-11. So it's still not 10%. But in, anyway, we Harold also tried to get a variance on this road if it was over 10% and wasn't even discussed. But uh, as far as I know, everything was done correctly. Maybe Wes has got something else to add that I might be forgetting. Thank you, sir. This is Wes Galloway. I worked for the Roads and Bridges from 2001 to 2014. Uh, as far as Willow Ridge, everything was done to county standard. The issue on the hill going from phase one to phase two was a percentage and Harold had originally wanted to come straight off of the hill and straight across the creek but the grade was going to be like 13 and a half 14 percent and Mac absolutely would not accept that so Harold spent an additional thirty thousand dollars to move the road to the right and bring it the way it is now so that it would meet county spec. Uh, 
And at the end of every day, anything that's done is documented on a piece of paper and turned into the office. Uh, as being a county worker, everything we do every day, we document. We turn it into the office. Where the records are, I don't, I don't know. I've been gone for three years. Uh, but as far as I know, if there is any issues about the rock or anything, they can go out and core drill it. That's what I mentioned, David. You know, the county has a core drill. Uh, go out and core drill the road. Dig it down, see if it's five inches of stone, two inches of asphalt. If there is, then that meets county standard. No. As far as the inspection, the way we've done the proof rolls is a county dump truck's provided, or David would provide a truck loaded with 21 ton of asphalt or rock. We walk behind it. If we see anything moving, it has to be dug out, and it has to pass where that truck does not move. And everything over there was done in acceptance that the county would take the road. And, uh, that's about all I know. That's true. Okay. <clears throat> and prior to any county county roads getting done uh, for an individual, I have to be bonded, and also purchase a bond for that road. What happened to it, I don't know, because I don't have my records back that far. But I do know there was a bond purchased and given to Oconee County Road Department. Thank you. And then just kind of in conclusion, um, based on the fact that most of this paperwork seems to have, we, we can't find it yet at this moment, um, I, I, as Tiger Heart Construction, am more than willing to deed over whatever is needed um, to allow access if you, for phase two, um, if there becomes any kind of issue where you need me to do that, I, I will do that. Um, I, I will work in any capacity I can to um, with the county to get the roads. They were intended to be county roads. They were inspected by county inspectors. Paperwork was turned in. Um, I've got six witnesses that were all there that can all testify. And I, I think I have a, the original argument that might have sparked a lively debate between two of them that is just hearsay, so I'll just let it stay there. But um, certainly have, I think, enough evidence beyond circumstantial to say that Willow Creek was designed um, properly according to the county specs, was made and inspected and approved by the county, and therefore I ask for the county to just complete the transaction and take the roads over. What, what was the year of phase one roads and the year of the phase two? The minutes show that phase two was approved by county council um, in 2007. The year of construction. 2007 for phase two. Um, like I told Katie, I could not go back further than 2009 in the minutes. So I'm thinking 2005. It's phase so one. It's phase one. So if I can get access to those archives, I would imagine we'll find that on the roads committee meeting on their agenda somewhere. And the difference in construction between phase two and phase one? Exactly the same. Same county standards. Mr. Mulder, we, when we went out on phase two, was it, were we testing phase two all the way from start to finish on, when phase two came in there? Sampling um, within those areas. We actually had phase one. We only did phase one. Um, we actually had Mr. White uh, Consulting go out and evaluate the uh, current as-built of the road um, in accordance with the ordinances and, and design requirements and construction requirements at that point in time and identify any areas where there may have been deficiencies. But um, I'll let Kyle kind of speak to more of the details about those. And that was regarding phase, phase one. one. Phase All one. right. Hey, I'm Mr. Galloway. I think had something to tell us. I do have some We just want to make sure everything is on record. Right. So. right. I do have some the information on the reason that phase one was took as is by the county council. Or phase, phase two. Phase two was taken. Phase two was accepted by the county council. Uh, 
where the I was talking about where they had changed the road. Uh, Tom Moxley, Mike Kelly, and myself were there at a meeting shooting the hill. And Harold Knight was talking with Tom Moxley, and I don't know, Mike kind of got upset about it. Anyway, there was a big argument started, and they were pretty heated there for a few minutes. Well, anyway, we got everything separated. Harold Knight left that night and come to the county council meeting. I don't know what was said at the county council meeting, but I know after that council meeting, it was accepted into the county system right then. Uh, as far as phase two. Phase two. Yes. Mr. Chairman, if I could, Mr. Galloway, just a quick question. David, I'm the county attorney, and I have the least historical knowledge about this, so I've been trying to piece it together for a while. <laughs> phase two, from everything I've found, and it maybe there's some other council action before that, but phase two, we found the council minutes that say we accepted it, just like you said, right. but haven't found anything on phase one acceptance, which seems odd. It does. something happened that they decided to skip over that, let's do a phase two and get it in or something, which doesn't make sense because it wouldn't connect to a public road. Do you know of phase one ever coming before council? As far as I know, phase one was completed just as any other county road that was going to be accepted would have been. Uh, as far as, you know, as far as our records, uh, I have very little records on phase one. Uh, Jimmy White would, I was kind of in training with Jimmy when, we, when he finished phase one. And he was kind of walking me through steps what to do. And I kind of took phase two on on my own. So as far as phase one, I know that everything was done and that paperwork and all was turned in, but why it never went in front of council, I do not have no idea. And, and phase one and phase two were both constructed by the same individual? Same contractor, same everything. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they both had bonds, too, is what he said. And if we can find those archives, we may be able to find from 2005 and 2006 council or transportation you know, just like they did with phase two. All right, thank you. All right, evening. Uh, just to go back through some of the some of the historical record that we have for the road. Uh, phase two was accepted, and uh, the county council approved a variance to accept the roads as built on February fifth, two thousand eight. Is what I have. Is when they accepted the roads. Um, for phase two, from our records, the right-of-ways were never offered to the county. Uh, the process to complete the road, and th this is where sometimes things get to where they're not finished. And I have worked on the private side. I actually helped design some of Willow Creek subdivision when I worked for Mr. Carroll. I helped design other subdivisions in the county that were followed by the county uh, uh, county followed the construction, everything went as well as could be expected, proof rolls, everything passed out, all that good stuff. And the contractor or the developer never offered the county roads to the, or never offered the roads to the county. I can name you a few that happened that way. Um, you know, how this one happened, I'm not sure. Again, I was on the private side. I did not, I wasn't in the know of how things work through the developer in the county on Willow Creek, so I'm not speaking to that one. I'm just speaking to a, a, of roads that I know of, issues that I've dealt with, and, and have examples of those. Um, the, so the roads for phase two were never offered to the end of the county system. Now that may be why phase one never came up before, is because phase two actually never came to the road department. Again, conjecture, I wasn't there, I'm not sure about that. But we can take, we can go back and look again and see if we can find anything that, that shows a phase one acceptance. Everything we have is that the, the, the council may have accepted phase two roads, but the right-of-ways were never accepted and signed over by the administrator to make the county, make the road a county road. There's still a process that you have to go through even after you, you get acceptance through the, through the council. Were we supervising that now? Mr. Reed. <clears throat> yes, sir. Phase one and phase two, which is which? Is which? Phase uh, one is what comes off of Critter Road, and it goes up past 
uh, Cozy Hill and Comet View, and okay. then Phase Two starts right after the private roads or the roads, the two roads that come off to the right, and then going down that hill, over the creek, back around the back side of the loop, and then back to itself is Phase Two. The reason I ask that, for Phase Two to be accepted, you've got to have a way to a public highway. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You do. So that means that Phase One somewhere along the line had been accepted. Is that true? We don't know. We don't know. We we have no record that phase one phase phase one was ever accepted. And phase two wasn't from what I have read, it wasn't accepted with a contingency to bring phase one up to code. And I know we've done that in past. Hey, if you bring this to this, the only thing that I can see is the request which is in the notes right here stating what would it cost to bring that road up to code which is 165,000 that was done what 2007 I mean I don't know what that would be now but it, uh, years ago. Yeah. okay so give or take 20,000 that 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 whole analysis and quote, quote came about when we were discussing it with the bank uh, we had these discussions when the bank community first the community first approached us as well because they uh, were the owners prior to the scan. And the bank came to us with this same request, and one of the things we did was say, well, let's at least find out what issues we have with phase one. We were willing to concede phase two because there was a vote of county council. Why it didn't get past that, and we didn't get the right-of-way deeds, and if we did, why we don't have them anymore. We, you know, we said, fine, we'll, we'll concede phase two, but let's look at phase one and make sure that that's built in accordance with the, the standards at that time. And that's when we hired the JW White Consulting to go out and evaluate the roads. Um, and then we generated a, pro a cost estimate in accordance with the items he said would need to, to be fixed. We did overlook some of the non-security, you know, safety issues. We didn't want to go in and repair it all. Let's just look at the, the main safety issues, and that was where the 165 or so came from. And at that time, we had offered to Community First, the county would pay half of that, no, a third, a third of that at that particular time that we would assist and pay a third of it if they would pay two-thirds of that cost. Let's go in and make the repairs. There were some issues. Um, some of them couldn't be repaired because some lots had been sold where a road would have to have connected and, and a number of other items. But And uh, I think at that time we were willing to overlook those as well with, with the bank. Um, so that's where that came from. Uh, we didn't have that done for any other reason than we were trying to resolve it with the bank to see what we'd be dealing with. Um, again, I, none of us over here were, was here at the time. So we don't know why there's no there are no documents. We don't know why the right of way deeds were never turned over, and if they were, why we don't have them. Um, we were just trying to find a way to bring phase one in and the compliance, so that phase two would have that public road access that Mr. Hart was was talking about. I've got a suggestion. <clears throat> I think we ought to get somebody of pest control out there to the uh, road department. We've evidently got a rat or something out there eating these plans and the, all this documentation. <clears throat> well, we've done a much better job here lately. Some of the older things, and I think um, I, I will say from what I have seen with new plans and everything has been 10 times better than what I've seen. And I know I've spoke with Mr. Mulder on multiple occasions of how can we make this easier for developers coming in there, and I think we've done a lot better on that this was 10 years ago so <clears throat> i mean i know we've done substantial upgrades on how we're doing with our developers which is great some of these are extremely concerning the issues that's listed on here that if they got corrected and were corrected i don't see them costing you know seventy eighty thousand dollars um but i want to make sure that some, several of them have to be correct before I would even consider making a motion on that. Um, well, I, I do want to point out before you move on there, Mr. Davis, that if you look at that list, very few of it's talking about the quality of the paving and the construction of the road. It's really more of a design standard than anything mm -hmm. else. So we want to make sure we point that out. We don't want to make it seem like we're accusing Mr. Hubbard of not oh, no. He paves a great road, so most well, of this is not about the depth and and some of it's very simple. The culvert pipe protect us. I mean, some of that can be added in. If it's not there, it can be added in and corrected. You know, the, the biggest thing, you know, kind of like what Mr. Hubbard said, drill the road, do a core sample. 
I'm happy with that. I have no issue with that. So, I mean, what I was speaking of had nothing to do with the pavement, just so that's noted. I'm just stating from, you know, on the erosion side of things, which is 90%, if you go into subdivisions, 90% of the issues with the road is the erosion because there's nothing off the side of them. There's either not a sidewalk or something like that. So, um, you know, the culvert pipe riprap, that's one of, you know, a big concern I have. The cul-de-sac's undersized. Is that based on the specs that we require now, or is that the end? Do, do we know much about, because? The, the cul-de-sac requirements, to my knowledge, in my recollection, have always come from, and still come from, the fire marshal. The fire department tells us what a proper turnaround is. Now, they have, they have came more to the road department side of a 40-foot cul-de-sac 80 foot diameter cul-de-sac, 40 foot radius cul-de-sac is being an adequate turnaround and that's what they are now requiring. But they, they used to allow Y endings to roads to where you could pull up and back out and go and that kind of thing. But for school buses, they can't back. So the 40 foot radius handles most most larger larger vehicles that you would have turned around in the cul-de-sac. And that's why 40 foot um, is, is what's required now from the fire marshal. Do we know what these are recorded as? Yes. Or do you I have videotapes of um, fire truck coming up and turning around in the cul de sac. Um, the daughter said you put cul de sacs at that speck at that day. Okay. What, what uh, Mr. White had was 67 and 66, which I mean would be close to 70. It depends on where you measure it. I mean, Mr. Mr. Hart can attest to that. It may be 70, but they may have pulled it at two different places. So. As far as that's concerned, the the 66 and 67 could be closer to 70 on that end. The the big, you know, again, we're not we're not wanting to look like we're splitting hairs. That's not any what any of this stuff is about. The 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 larger concerns would be the 12 percent grades, which again that goes back to to fire code. The uh, the K values in the SAGs between Cozy Hill and Comet View, which you, you don't have 26, you have like 15, which is the sight distance issue. Those sorts of things would be more more the safety issues Mr. Mulder was talking about that we were talking about, and that's talking about reconstructing the road. And that's something that Wes or Mr. Hubbard, whenever they were out there, that's not anything you see. That's that's design. That's that you know that's putting stakes in the ground, construction stake, and, and building that road exactly what the engineer thought of it to be so those kind of things are kind of they're kind of in there it's it's hard to sit there and engage that whenever you're driving down a road especially the sag curves when, when it's daytime you can see but when it's nighttime your headlights only shine so high and that's what gives a problem for sight distance those kind of things mm -hmm. you know the 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 issues that mr white has pointed out that that is you know and i i just uh, uh, remove the road department from this, you know, as far as records go, we can certainly see what we have. I, I have not looked for for record from the road department. Uh, Miss Gant may have talked to Mr. Kelly about that, but I have not looked for them. I'll be happy to look for them and see what we have in our possession. But take the road department out of this. J.W. White Consulting, which was paid for by, or which was uh, contacted from Community First Bank, Miss Sutton, went out there, did an as built of the roads. This is what he's found. This is not what I'm saying I haven't gone out there and surveyed the roads. I don't know what center line profile is except for what Mr. White provided to us. Um, and again, the conversations that we've had back and forth on this have been have been varied and and over a large period of time. So you know, as far as any of this stuff goes, the 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 major concerns, as as Mr. Mulder kind of pointed out, is the design elements of the road. Is the things that would require the road to be rebuilt in certain in certain sections. Mr. Reed? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you was talking about daylight and sight distance. Yes, sir. What if they put street lights out? That could be a consideration. Okay. To handle that. Again, you you concern yourself with what if the street light goes out. But, you know, again, that's that's a consideration that has been made at different points on, on different things. And certainly would be a consideration that we would look at that if if y'all y'all chose to approve that as a as a as a variance or as a condition of an of an approval, then that's not something that I would say is a problem. Yeah, you know, again, 
It's light. That's what you need, light, to make that situation go away. The center line road slope, 12 percent, that's that small area, and there's not the road coming off critter. That's a little bit it is, less. It is where you start in on the road, and it curves, and you start going up that hill. It is that section, yes, sir. Is it how much more than? We require 10, right? 12, Less than 10. 12 is our requirement. Our 12 is our requirement. Yes, and what did it come in as? 12.59. for uh, less than half a mile. Oh yeah, no, it's it's uh between two vertical curves, which is at station eight forty one and at oh, station eight forty four. So three foot at twelve percent. Now, as you go along the vertical curve, the slope changes. So it may be less than twelve percent. It's it's a constant, it's a tangent 12% for that three feet. It may be less than 12%, or it may be greater than 12% for 30 or 40 feet, depending on how that, it's a quadratic curve that changes the slope as it goes over the hill. The biggest thing is, is dragging coming up onto uh, The biggest a... thing is, as far as, and, and I hate to speak for the fire department, but we happen to have one of the fire officials here, if Charlie wants to speak on that, but as far as my understanding, it is fire, fire apparatus, on a hill, those sorts of things. Is that and their and their requirements ten percent or less. As parked or as driving. Any, any access. Because the the breakover, I guess the breakover angle from a standard flat road into whatever that grade would be. I may be wrong on this, but that twelve percent is on phase two, not phase one. And phase two's already been accepted by the county, correct? You, may, I, phase two. may I show them what because they may they may not have this with community first yeah being involved and, and just a side note I want to point out that Scott Carroll did do these drawings and all of this was approved by the inspectors with everything turned in you know, with at least two witnesses here um, that phase one was done correctly I mean it, it was planned by the county. I mean, it was drawn by the county. It was accepted by the inspectors as being correct. So I, I know there was a big fight between Mr. Knight and Mr. Kelly. And maybe paperwork got lost then, but there, there was definitely some tension between the two parties that got involved. I just want to make sure we didn't draw the plans, uh, just to make sure to clarify that. She mm -hmm. had said that the county drew it. We did not, Mr. Carroll. I'm sorry, the engineer. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Carroll sorry. obviously didn't work, you know, for us at that particular point in time. Mm -hmm. He was an independent person. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, we can't employ you now. Yeah. Mr. Hart, I think some of my my issues, like I said, is the major things that we really need to sit back here. I think some of the testing, you know, no testing done to determine thickness and compaction, is that something that we can do we do have the core and that cost associated to us would be minimal i mean we already own the equipment we can go out and core drill it and you know obviously when you break that seal that road you you know compromise the integrity of it but you know it does happens all the time we could go out well we're talking about phase one there. how many drillings would we have to do uh, i'd probably pick every 40 feet maybe and i don't know exactly how long that road is but it wouldn't be many um i think every 40 foot drill uh, alternating sides be plenty. I don't. I said I don't. I don't think we have any concerns about the, the depth of construction. Of the I, road. I don't think we have any problem with the compaction. Not with these two gentlemen here testing, okay. talking about <clears throat> when they tested it and the the compaction that the road was. Well, he was talking about walking behind that truck. They call that pumping, or they did when I did that. In other words, if the ground is the truck is making the ground go down and pump back up when it leaves so if they were following that truck and it was doing that I think they got the compaction yeah I'm not as concerned about the base of the road and the quality of the, the construction of the road so is your primary concern that the two cul-de-sac roads are too close together that have the house built on them is that the primary concern 
I mean, the, the concerns are the fact that phase two, again, we were at the time, even then, we were willing to concede that. Part of the issue is this, that in order to accept a road in the public system, it has to have access from a public road. Any roads accepted into the system have to meet the ordinances and standards at that particular point in time. Whether or not it went through the process and all, we don't know. None of us were here, we can't find it, and I hate that. Uh, the problem, the, the, the issue is when we had them evaluate based on the ordinances we had at the time, the way they were built don't meet the way the ordinance would have required them at the time. Whether they were designed to meet it, I don't know, but the actual way they were laid out don't meet. Well, we cannot accept a road in um, administratively that doesn't meet our ordinances, and we are not allowed to provide post-construction variances through a process. The law doesn't allow that. Um, you can't go into after construction and say, okay, we're going to give you a variance on this. It has to be done prior to construction um, in today's standards and, and, and laws. So legally, the process just isn't there for us to be able to accept them on a normal condition. And I think I hope we said that okay. You want to clean it up? <laughs> um, that's what I was asking about phase one because it's a bit of a mystery. The time that this was, um, these roads were built, the ordinance that was in place at that time allowed for the supervisor to allow for variances as long as they were consistent with the intent of the chapter. So the supervisor goes away in 03-ish. And so you can say that in, well, in late 08 we get the new standards, but you could say that the council is essentially taking the place of the supervisor for 03 through 08. So the council could perhaps do variances, and this is just base level legal reasoning. The council could do that. So for acceptance of phase two under the old standards, which it was proposed to council under, I don't have a great deal of heartburn because there are some variances there that seem to be consistent with the intent of the chapter, but then it's the mystery of why phase one wasn't brought up at that time. It would be great if there were some council minutes, some transportation committee, committee minutes, something that said that they dealt action, had action on it. Roads and Bridges Department being involved doesn't necessarily bring us to that point where there's a final legal conclusion because at 08, when we change the ordinances over, there can be, like Mr. Moore said, there can't be any variance from the standards retroactively. So any variance has to be, all right, we're going to draw these roads this way. It doesn't conform to your standards. Is that okay? Take it to the BZA, they, and then, then on from there to the Transportation Committee, and then on. So if you <coughs> grant a variance or do something different now in the present standards, it would be against the so that's why there's some legal issues. We only have our transportation committee minutes online back to 2009, as Ms. Gantz said, that this time frame wasn't on there. So the, the next two items, or the, the third and fourth item, I don't have much to, to present in those. Those are the gentlemen to my left. If you'd like, I can run back and try and go through the written, see if I can find the written minutes from that time frame <coughs> while you go through that one and see what I can find and come back. Um, and hopefully we can see if there's anything in there. So you're saying that we couldn't accept phase one roads if they didn't meet all these specs, regardless of if... As we had said at that point in time, some of the things that weren't safety issues, we were willing to just overlook. I mean, we, we understand the situation. But it was the, the more safety issues that if we accept them in and something happens, a kid gets run over, because it's too dark and then we didn't we accepted a road that didn't have the right K value I guess I'm saying correctly I don't know then could we have been liable for that I mean and those are the those are the questions and unknowns that we don't know until they happen but I mean those are the issues if it's a safety issue and we accept them and they didn't comply with the standards that, that were in place and somebody got hurt where does the liability fall mm -hmm. um, you know maybe that's a risk you know we're willing to take I don't know but those are just the things we have to kind of think about I'm going to run and see and, uh, what I can find from the office. So that just brings me back to that final question is that the plans were drawn by Mr. Carroll and they would have been a blueprint and they would have been submitted for the process and we already know that one county council or I mean one inspector um, said I you cannot put that corrugated pipe in you have to put concrete pipe in because our regulations were different than the state at no point in time did any of the inspections not pass and stop 
them from building the roads. So logically, they were following codes, they were signed off, and they continued to work, or we would have never got to phase two. Um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have gotten that far. They would have stopped work. I mean, I'm a builder, so I know if you don't pass, you have to go back and you have to fix what they've done and you pay your little fee and then they come back. Same things with the roads. They've got to approve them. So there was a written plan. Um, there were inspectors and workers that were getting inspected and approved or they wouldn't have continued working. And I know that this, this study is saying some of these issues and I certainly, I don't want any safety issues either. I don't want anybody hurt on the roads, but I, I can't understand why phase one would go along with blueprints that at the time they would have seen and said, oh no, we can't do that, but they did. Even though it wasn't the same type of administration, common sense said it was drawn, you know, these guys were out there, we had more people, I mean, things were changed. There's a lot of, there's still a lot of co uh, uh, concrete culverts out there. I mean, they're sitting on top of the ground. They were used. So for me and my logicness, my logical brain here, I'm, I can't get past the fact that that paperwork is somewhere. Um, it had to be, or they wouldn't approve them to start. I don't doubt the in intent to be accepted because it kind of make, wouldn't make much sense to go build in a subdivision when they're wanting to keep the roads for life. So. I understand the intent on that, and I understand <clears throat> this is not the only one. There's a lot of them where the roads were inspected, and by looking at the roads, you know, they, they seem to be in good shape on there. There's several subdivisions that you can honestly tell that it was just still a construction uh, road that never got to the next level. That's not the, the case of what I see here, but I, I just want to make sure that when we go down through some of these can be corrected very easily, which is a good, good thing. It just, uh, you know, this one is very puzzling. And I just, like I said, y'all do a much better keeping records and it makes our life a whole lot easier that we're not sitting up here trying to put, put uh, these pieces together back in. Cause it seems to me back from 2000 to 2006 ish, there's a lot of, you know, trouble trying to find out Okay, I can put this person out here. I know they were out here, but there's no records anywhere. Um, so it kind of puts us in a predicament to say, well, you know, we, we, you know, I think the intent was there. It's just what needs to be corrected. What's, what's major and what's, you know, if, you know, like you said, if we can put lights up and that, that means something, then that's, you know, where we can kind of work together to, get this corrected because I think that's what we're here to do. And we can put lights up and we could put solar if there's a particular place. We could put a solar. That usually would not fail. Um, we can put a caution sign up. Um, we can put whatever is needed. I mean, being from out west, they put grade is X, Y, Z, you know. It's, it's, in fact, it's... Is any of these that is listed up here on this... J.W. White Consulting, has any of that been corrected or changed or reviewed or anything by anybody to say, you know, like where they said culvert pipe in installation was not verified, not, you know, has any of that been? According to that list, no, but um, when I interviewed all the people who built the roads, they can tell you that the culvert was put in, that that the 12% the was 9%. But 11 percent so you're saying that the road is not exceeding 12 percent it's less than 12 percent well on phase two on phase two right on phase two. no just phase I didn't realize. no I'll, are we talking about coming I don't, on phase one i mean i don't know that answer but that would be yeah i'm not concerned with phase two phase two is out of my Mine is phase no, one. I'd, I'd like to know where phase two starts then, because I thought phase two at started, at, started at the joint. That's what I thought was right at the top of the hill, right. So I just speaking from the fact that what they verified, that there was 13% where Mr. Knight wanted to build the road, and the county said no, that's where it started. So we moved it, and it was 9 11%. There's no hill steeper than that in phase one. I can, I can kind of go back to what they're talking about with Mac, okay. the 13%.
the road was designed a different way than what it got built. It, it's not... In phase two. In, in phase two. There, it's not... Again, we're talking about conjecture to a point on my part, but whenever you end a road higher, starting the next phase, and then you're trying to get lower, then that's possibly where the 13% came from because to my recollection, remembering the plans for phase one, the, the sag between the two drive between the two uh, the there's a sag in there that wasn't supposed to be in there it was supposed to be filled up level and that's where you have a k value issue in the sight distance like we're talking about putting a lot so whenever you start a road up higher than what it was originally designed for and then you try to tie on and go down into this hill across this creek and not impact the creek because you've got Corps of Engineers permits <coughs> keeping you from impacting more of the creek, putting in more pipe, those kind of things, then you might have to move a road. And that's my recollection. Again, this was 2007, 2008, whenever we had these discussions about this road, I was involved in phase two. I was not involved in the design of phase one, but I looked at the plans, remember what it was, that kind of thing. So, you know, you get into some situations that are not contemplated whenever you're designing of the field conditions being drastically different than what you left them at whenever you finished designing phase one. But, I'm not again, conjecture. I do not know that for a fact. All I know is that the road got moved, had to be redesigned. The K value for that phase, for, and, and, and to my recollection, we weren't told about it. The engineer wasn't told about it. They just moved the road. There was no read. We redesigned it after, after they started building it, and that's when we had to get into redesigning that road to to go around like what they're talking about, thirteen percent. So you know, again, it may have been different. I don't know. I wasn't there, but that that's that's phase two as far as our concern is. Phase two is accepted. There is no. There is no going back. There is no unringing the bell on that, um, unless y'all chose to. But you know, phase two is accepted. We're we're really just talking about phase one. And I'm sorry that wasn't clear. Um, whenever we're going through this, but phase one is what we're what we're originally <coughs> discussed and contemplating. What do you say? Well, I think I think the easiest thing is the. You know, if we want to do, I think one core sample is fine to me. I don't think we need to go drilling four samples in that road. I just, that, that way we have it written down, whatever it is, unless it's, you know, um, I mean, I don't know. W would you? We, we did core samples. We did. On in one? one? On phase one. We did core samples. Uh, again, to my recollection, and this was the, the slides from the July 14th of 15 meeting, that we did cores, uh, the road was in good shape with only one core being less than the required thickness, and I think it was like an inch and five-eighths or an inch and three-quarters, so over over a total, over an average, the road was more than two inches, and then there was one soft area that was alligator cracked on the road, and that was it. That was all we found. Again, okay. the, road was it, the road surface was in good shape when we looked at it. No, I'm sorry, we kind of jumped around. No, that's perfect. That's fine. And we, you know, the, the cola sacks don't sound too crazy off. The culvert, did we look at the culverts about what, how they're installed or have we? I know. I believe the comment on here is that the. Because that's, that. To me, it's probably my biggest concern because of washout. And I, I, I imagine you could go look at them right now and see if they're doing their job. They have been. <laughs> and we have um, four, four retention ponds. Um, there's a retention pond um, behind, uh, this comes off Critter, it's Critter Road and two lots, and there's a retention pond. There is a, ret a retention pond that's a full acre, actually. It's really a detention pond when I studied it because it never has water in it. But, um, oh, I'm so sorry. It's just hard to see that. No, that's fine. So um, there are four retention ponds on the property. There's one that is literally parallel to Critter Road um, behind lots, I think, 13 and 14 or 14 and 15. And then there is um, 
uh, it's really called a detention pond because it doesn't hold any water, but it's right there, one acre um, by lot 48, and the, the creek runs behind it. And it's a big, full acre um, detention pond. And then there is at the top, okay, so you come at the very top of the hill, and there's a couple of houses already built, and you start to come down. And on the right, down below, are two more um, retention ponds. I actually haven't gone down there to walk. Um, I've been working on clearing and clearing and clearing because from the time the bank owned it to me was a lot of it. I just haven't physically walked down there, but on that map you can see the four um, retention ponds. And there's a lot more, I mean, growth now. So all the runoff, and we've had, even, even last night, um, no mud on the roads. Um, that creek, even in the dry spells, is, is still running, and we've had no washout over the roads. Um, I'm out there every day because I'm building and I haven't seen anything. The only red clay we got was a neighbor that came out of his backyard and crossed my road. Mr. Galloway, would you step up the mic, please? Yes, sir. In the course of inspection, you was there when they were laying the pipe, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, is it design or the drainage that they had projected that would be coming through this pipe, you had the right standard size pipe to handle the, the runoff. Is that correct? Sir? Yes, sir. Okay. If to, to help you understand, you know, kind of the way it does things, and, and Kyle it's can like back this, this up, especially here. with Mac. Mac was really, really big on pipes. He was really big on the 100-year storms. So every pipe in the subdivision, Mac done a hundred year study on. That's the reason that the pipe at the creek has not went over. Uh, because Mac was really, really big on water. That was his specialty. And that's what, and, and as far as the blueprints, whenever they draw a set of blueprints up, you turn them into the road department and they go over them and they approve them. So, that's how the blueprints got approved. That's how the pipes got approved. And uh, am I kind of right in that? I mean, Mac was really big on the hundred years water oh, yeah, studies. Yeah. And, no, and, and the only um, thing that I see from Wesley White's call out about, he, he said that the pipes appear to be function. The only thing that I see that he called out on his was that uh, based on the survey performed, the 18 inch culvert below Cozy Hill Court appears to have a lower discharge elevation than the culvert below Twin View Court, Twin View Road, which the culvert belongs below Cozy Hill discharges into. It is recommended a hydraulic, hydro, hydrologic hydraulic check of this piping system be performed to ensure that the system will function properly at the 25 year storm event, which is again in the ordinance. So it's basically saying that all the other pipes, as far as he's concerned, appear to be functioning properly. Again, the, the culvert down in the creek at phase two is not kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. It's just, it's the items that, that Wesley White called out on his, as as some things that may be a problem. You know, again, I haven't looked at the, see what the elevation shot on the culvert was to see it may be a tenth higher on a, on a discharge pipe. <clears throat> the, the shoulder's four foot minimum, I've seen that. What, three times now explain yes. that to me real quick the shoulder of the road you have the the driving surface the the 10 foot lane typically and then you've got a shoulder that tapers off and then it tapers down into a ditch that taper between the ditch and the roadway is the shoulder it's got to be a minimum of four foot wide and and typically um no more than 12 percent on the on the on the section you Basically, you want something there that's transverse, that's, that somebody can maneuver if they run off the road. It right. keeps them on the road instead of off in the ditch. And the road intersection angle? Road intersection angle is more for uh, a few different issues. One being water going out of, coming off of a road. Whenever you've got a 2% slope and you've got a steeper slope, then water tends to not overcome that, that smaller slope, it wants to go down the steeper slope. So you have an issue with water coming out into the into the main road, whatever road it's tying into. Uh, the other issue is, um, you know, 
sometimes, and there are some roads in the county, and these are not these situations. So whenever we're maintaining roads in the snow, things like that, we come to an end of a road trying to plow a road, and it's pushing us out into a main road. The, those kind of situations and that's that's more of a non exact exaggeration but worst case scenario but you could have the issue with somebody coming into a road coming in on a 12 percent or something like that hitting the brakes coming too fast those kind of things you know you, you just want to have a gentle landing area for somebody to be able to stop is essentially what it boils down to and the water coming out of the road Just I do believe it's always, and I think it's called Willow Creek Highway. Did you hear him say he was out there when they expected those pipes? Right. Right. Um, so you know. sometimes there's a little confusion. You have to check and make sure it's a night backman. Do you have any questions from Mr. Galloway? No, I'm happy with everything but the, the riprap. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. the, uh, there, there are two Willow Creeks um, in Oconee County. This one now, um, when I pull it up on MLS or I pull it up from the county, it says Willow Creek Highway 11. The other, when I went to look for the, the, the recorded deeds as far as the POA, um, there were lots and lots of pages and I had to finally look at the, the, the names. There's a Willow Creek that Southern Homes did and it's a completely different neighborhood. And I don't... Okay. <laughs> but I think it's always been called Willow Creek. I, it might have been just called Twin View Drive when he did. I, I don't know. To save time, I think that we need to sort of postpone this and, and take it up with a full council. Can we do a having an you know, just a inspection, especially on the culvert, looking at the rip wrap and stuff like that. Very simple. Obviously, we got the core stuff accomplished. Besides that one, which I'm happy with that, the the road slope is that simple to measure? Is that so? We kind of have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we're twelve point five, is it possible that his things was out point five? You know. Phase two. Oh, that's phase one. Normally, no. Depending on how they measure this, uh, more than likely they measure this with the with the surveying instrument, okay. shoot in the center line. Yeah, I can't get that accurate. I mean, I, we do have an instrument, but this is probably an experienced surveyor, yeah. and I'm not. But generally, what we do is a four foot level and a tape measure. So yes, it is it is easy to check and see, but it's not going to be as accurate as what this gentleman did. Because I'm not concerned. I mean, for for all I care, phase two could be twenty percent. Right. I, all I want is to kind of have, here's what phase one is to that mark. <coughs> here's some of the issues that I think that need to be corrected so that way if we, you know, we're going to accept them. I mean, it, it could be as simple as like the riprap or the, you know, the, the shoulder the stuff. I, like I said, we've had that come up before. But those are my concerns for the road integrity long term. That's, that's all I have. To, Mr. Chairman, if I could, to Mr. Hart's point, I think he was move it forward to council, but to gather up some information in the interim, and I think those things would be, tell me if I'm wrong, one, we need to find out if there are any directors for transportation committee, or I'm pretty sure there's none for council, but if there are, for phase one, make sure we got the exact deficiencies for phase one pegged down, and any mitigation efforts that um, Ms. Ganton and her company are willing to do if there are some safety issues so we can present those that be correct if lighting or anything else that would address the safety issues and then probably the best way to do it would be to get, once we get those things addressed and we're ready to come to council would be to have an executive session first so I could talk about the legal issues related to variances uh, estoppel detrimental alliance there's some other issues that play into this talk about this first and then we'd have it on the agenda for acceptance afterwards Does that make sense right would you need a uh would you like if we had a motion to bring it up for we'll say there's november 7th or 21st would you need that at, at this time to be on there no, we don't. I, for me i'm good whenever it's just a matter of when they can tie up um, getting all the needs they have for the mitigation to see what documents we have i believe Ms. gam may have some other information that she's trying to track down mm -hmm. um, so it's a matter of making sure we got that whole all put the bow around us so that we can present it 
so, succinctly and concisely to council. Would we need a formal motion to no, come out of this committee at all? Okay. We would just apply it on the agenda ready. at that time. Is everybody ready? We'll contact Ms. Kamick and make sure she's good to have it on the agenda as a chairman or chairwoman, and we'll get it on there if she's good with it, hopefully in the next couple of meetings. Okay. I just wanted to say um, that there may not be deficiencies since the roads were county approved by inspectors. So it, when you said what deficiencies, I just want to say if there were deficiencies because the roads were inspected and approved by the, count, by the county inspectors at the time. And I know this new study is saying some other things, but at that time, I mean, if a house is approved for inspection, it's approved. So if, that was all I wanted to say, if, before deficiencies. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the details, and I am going to. And the details are important. So yes. Assuming that we, we find that there were deficiencies related back to the old one, we need to make sure that we address those um, specifically. And if they were approved, even um, to make it real clear legally, a, an inspector cannot waive a code deficiency road inspector cannot waive um, by way of approving a deficiency so just because they approved it doesn't mean that it's, it's waived um, but perhaps there aren't any deficiencies when we apply previous case so I want to gather all that information and present it to council well if that suits everybody let's move on to uh, the discussion on the spec building at Golden Colors <coughs> Yes, sir. Just an update. Um, we received the SED HEC SWIP, the stormwater pollution preparedness plan, and it was approved on October 2nd. Had the pre construction meeting with the engineer October 3rd. Um, what we're looking at currently is going in and, and grading out the road, taking the 27,000, roughly 27,000 yards of um, cut material out of the road, uh, placing it on the site in a way that's beneficial to. The rest of the grading that's going to take place on the pad site and um, completing that, graveling the road, sealing it off, getting everything ready for, for worse weather for this to kind of carry on whenever we get into the better weather in, in the spring or early of next year to, uh, to complete the grading on the pad. I would like to see you grading as soon as possible. Yes, sir. There's actually, we're still waiting on two items for the Santee Cooper loan application to be approved. Um, we've got to have the survey for the right of way and appraisal of the parcel for the spec building loan uh, before we can even get the money approved at this point in time. It's our intent to actually start the construction by October 18th. Um, and then handing it off to the contractor uh, starting out after the first of the year sometime in February so they can start during the, the better months for construction. We're only going to grade out the portion of the dirt that we take from the roads. It's about 27,000 cubic yards. The contractor that we hired still has about 50,000 cubic yards worth of dirt to move on site as well. Uh, but yeah, we're, we will start construction on that road. Uh, we'll go ahead and have everything set up and ready to go, all the dirt moved over for the contract to start, and then we'll come back in and pay extra to the paving during the weather in the first of the year. So, I mean, we're still on schedule with regard to the Santee Cooper loan. We're getting them all lined up, and next week we're hoping to start actually cutting that road in and get her done. You're talking about a contractor. Are we going to have a, a grading contractor? Well, we'll have that discussion with the, the developer that's going to, the design builder that's going to build the building. We've actually factored into the budget for the loan uh, site work, uh, about $600,000, and we'll discuss that with the design builder at that time about having a, a contractor come in and grade the site and get it ready. We already have the building marketed out there, ready to, I mean, that we're building it, is that because we got the specs, are we moving forward with the marketing side of things? As far as bidding it? No, as at selling. As as marketing the industry that it's going to be coming. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure we are. Look them up. 
If not, he's fired. <laughs> the easy answer is, is yes. We have started marketing it. Um, we've let our partners know at uh, Department of Commerce and also the Upstate Alliance that we are in pursuit of, of a building. I mean, we would love to sell it before it gets erected. As Mr. Reed noticed, it is fully permitted now, um, which is a huge selling point um, that, you know, there's a 100,000 square foot building permitted for that plot of dirt. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, we've started to – we're in the process of changing our property flyer as we get um, a new aerial done. Um, the fire chief is, is helping us with um, some new aerials. Um, so, yeah, it's all being it's all being worked on. Thank you. Be good. Next, Number one marketing team in the. Okay. If that's all, let's move on to the Savannah uh, Drive for a rudimentary road program. Mr. Reed. All right. Savannah Drive is a road that is right um, in Seneca, South Walnut, right around Hopewell. Baptist Church, that area, and they contacted us to come out there and look at their roads uh, that are in foul shape uh, for the rudimentary road program. Just to go over briefly, the rudimentary road program is uh, acceptance of certain unpaved roads. Uh, this happened on uh, Snow Creek Forest Road, mm -hmm. and we repaired it, traveled it, and now maintain it minimally. Uh, the criteria for selection is that they serve more than 11 residences. This has 17 residences on the road, and uh, on the road is kind of a misnomer. There's three roads, actually. It is all the same alignment, so I'm going to call it one road. So it's it's a similar alignment. It goes back in, takes a couple curves, but th for some reason there's three road names to it. Uh, it's unpaved in a state of disrepair. Um, from what I was told by the citizens, somebody came out there and tried to pave it with a backhoe, and that is the remnants of backhoe paving. So that's why it did not last. Mm -hmm. uh, they must out for a 50 foot right of way easement that we would have to pursue getting. Cul de sac required, there is no, there is not a cul de sac currently, and all property owners must agree to certain conditions, i.e., the, the improvements of the road one, um, not putting things on the side of the road, that kind of thing. The stormwater runoff and no additional accesses, so there can be no subdivisions come off of it. They cannot put in any more driveways. It is what it is at this point if anybody accepts it. So if they have undeveloped lots, that could be something that would be uh, problematic to somebody that has an undeveloped lot on this on this property, on, the, on this road. Um, again, they contacted us in May. Uh, we received a package the August 21st, which is the petition. It's just the jumping off point. Um, for this, they they have to sign a petition, uh, follow through with the right of way, other things along that in that nature, um, and the development consists of three roads, like I said, in the same general alignment that are approximately 2,400 feet in length, and they have no cul-de-sac at the end. Um, if you look on the next page, you'll see a, a parcel map of the road and its general alignment. Again, 2,400 feet long, um, and it is in pretty poor shape. The reason bringing this to y'all is we had to request, typically on these we were told with Snow Creek Forest that Snow Creek Forest was the one that we were doing at that point in time. That there wasn't any, there wasn't any others contemplated, there wasn't any list, there wasn't a budget for these types of roads. So bringing it back to y'all to see if y'all want us to pursue uh, moving forward with Savannah Drive in the Rudimentary Road Program. Again, long way to go. It's not anywhere near there, but just wanted to bring it to y'all and see if that's something that um, before we start going in, having meetings with folks, telling them that th this is what we're doing, kind of a go thing, that y'all know and are aware and approve our direction forward for this road. Didn't we set a limit, like one per year we were going to do or something like that? We didn't set a limit in the ordinance, but we did state in there that this program is going to be contingent on available fund, and it may be discontinued at any time. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to strap it down to one or one every three years okay. to make it mandatory. So I think the cost element, which I think Ms. Reed just is a very general idea of what it may cost uh, to construct and maintain it, will be important. And that's what we've told the people that contacted us, limited. That, that is the word that is in the ordinance, and that's the word we use. This is a limited program. This is a very selective program for them to get into. 
general cost would be about thirty thousand dollars for the road upgrade putting in putting in six inches of stone cul-de-sac and culvert pipe for the road so that's that's a general cost not a hard bull cost or anything like that but it's a budget cost for the road and then the the maintenance every year would be somewhere around a thousand dollars a year so thirty thousand thirty thousand upgrade the road yes sir what do we spend on forest creek Snow Creek. Creek. Snow Creek. I believe that it was around, and, and you'll have to forgive me. I can give you. I it had another zero numbers, on it. Didn't I believe it? that it was around thirty thousand as well. The, the I estimate, thought it was substantial. The was estimate was a lot more. The culvert pipe in the creek, and there were two of them that were in the creek. So those were eighty-four inch concrete culverts with head walls and and those sorts of things. The the metal culvert that was in the creek was actually salvageable. It just had one in section that had been tore off of it or damaged on it. So we saved that culvert to save the money of, an, of a something like, um, forgive me, I'm throwing all these numbers out, but it was it was substantial, the cost of the culvert pipe on that road. That's what I thought. Yeah, I thought it was, it was something like, like that, but that was for every road in there as well. That was not just limited to Snow Creek Forest. That was that was every <clears> road in that subdivision because it was the ordinance had not been pared down to specifically just Snow Creek Forest at that time. Right. And this road right here is just Savannah Drive. It's not including the Brady Drive and the no, Austin. Is, I'm, I'm including all the roads in it just because. Because I know that's when it gets really tough, you know, like with that one. And and um, they were very grateful for that the way that program worked out for them. But right. then it's like, why couldn't they do my why little road? Because that's, roads. you know, and that's that's the tough part. Anytime you have it connected on here, and that's kind of what I wanted to kind of make sure going into this that we're, if we're including extra, you know, 20 or 30 feet, which we did a good job, especially that one breakover angle was a lot steeper i'm not so sure we can still get um you know a fire truck in that area because it'd be i guess maybe certain trucks but not our big ones um you know because of the grade associated with certain areas but so this would be savannah drive brady drive and austin drive yes sir cul sac at the end of cul sac at the end austin of drive austin drive and <clears throat> Again, per ordinance, and I have no idea why this road is not the same way. I can guess, and it's probably because they didn't want to um, adhere to the curve requirements of a 150-foot horizontal curve, and they just named the road different names to make them intersections instead of a continuation of a road. But um, the road being in general alignment, again, by ordinance, it should be named the same thing. It should not be something different. This is probably something that I'm going to look at Charlie again. Emergency management, and this is a conversation we had, emergency management does not appreciate that you've got three different roads named on one road, so they're going to go by Savannah Drive and not know that this is three different roads. So that cul-de-sac area on Austin Drive, would we have to get the rights of the property owner? We'd have to get right away for the whole road. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, the, the right of way goes to the center of the road, and or the, the property lines go to the center of the road. So everybody would have to agree. Everybody would have to sign the right of way. And everybody would, you know, to get in this program, limits themselves to any future development accesses, cul de or subdivisions coming off this road subdividing subdividing land further all that stuff it is it is extremely limited it's owner occupied owner -occupied. verified owner occupied do we we have not verified on your occupied we have we have went through and discussed how many people live there but we have not verified who, who lives there who gets their mail there that's that's the next step that we would have to go through is to see um, who lives where who we have a suspicion that there's two renters on the road currently. Okay. So 
and the grade of that road. Does the grade of these roads matter to us when we take them in for gravel? No, they will be left at the same alignment as they were before because you start getting into smoothing it, smoothing, smoothing it out, it out yes, throwing that, like throwing the gravel down. Yep. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Or you start getting into That's tremendous cost. Yeah. Right. Of realigning, realigning roads. I would say let's just go ahead and do what paperwork we got to do and see if this, if we can accept it. Go ahead and get the right of way and uh, see how many of those people actually do live there and own. And again, we would we would approach it as it's not accepted until y'all accept it. We could y'all have y'all given us the the charge to move forward with it, but that is still going to be up to. Transportation Committee and Council to accept this road in the rudimentary road program. We can follow through the steps to to get them where where they have filled out the petition and everything is is, is dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's for Mr. Root and and then bring it to y'all. But it, it it will still be told to these folks that nothing is accepted as of yet. There is still a process. Whatever we've just been told to move forward with it. Mr. Motor, do you know what we have left in that program? That's what I thought. So budgeting for right now, there's nothing in there to do that. It'd have to. Um, I think what what I'd like to see with that is if they bring this to us, a citizen initiated, right, this mm -hmm. program. Um, so I would almost like if they were going to bring this to us, that whoever decides to bring this, let's say it's Julian Davis, that it be my responsibility to get my owner-occupied signature verification and then have that presented before it even comes up. Yes, and we do generally do that. We do. They they get the signature. The gentleman that was he and he was supposed to be here tonight. And I'm sorry, I'm taking up his, but. Uh, they went and got the signatures. They get the right of way. They pay the, the surveyor cost. They do all this. We just help because sometimes this stuff is, is daunting, you know, without knowing how to go through the process. So we help out we can. So that's that's what we went through. We you know, basically they gave us a they gave us a petition and we we did a little pre math. That's basically all we've done on this, except okay. for having conversations with them as far as here's the petition here's the checklist, this is what you do, and they've carried it on from there. But it wouldn't be us involved to that point of, of finding out who lives where. It wouldn't. It certainly wouldn't be us going and trying to get right away or anything else like that. That's not, that's not, that's, that is all borne on the citizens by the ordinance. And that 30000 includes us buying rock through our rock quarry yes. for this that job? Yes, that is the largest part of that cost. Yeah, I mean, right now we don't have ain't nothing in there to do. I, I have no problem. I don't want to waste time on this, but if we had a list, you know, if let's say we get 15 of these individuals that want roads and how we scale them and how we study them, I mean, if we've got some that have 45 residences, I don't know if we have that uh, many. Most of them seem to have less than 20. I've been contacted by these folks, and I've been contacted by couple other folks that did not have the res residences on the road so this is pretty much the only one that had more than 11 residences since we did snow creek Forge. okay with snow creek Forge, we actually used a portion of our maintenance money to complete that one uh, when it was like thirty thousand. so what we could do is continue with the process and depending on whether or not we spend all that maintenance money or i have any contingency money left toward the end of the year we can go ahead and get them approved and then we can report back and if there's some available funding that I can find then we'll, we can go in and, and complete the work if that pleases the committee. I, mean, I don't want to just stop the process. I mean, it, there's always money differences throughout mm -hmm. the year so we could possibly, you know, find some. Okay. Do you need a motion for that or are we good? No. Hmm? You're good. Y'all all want to do it. Right? Okay. All right. Emanuel Church. Next one is Emanuel Church Road. They would like to abandon that road from the county maintenance. Again, similar to the uh, to the Savannah Road, this is just a, a charge forward. Um, in in the past, um, 
we have always came to the transportation committee before we start placing up signs saying the road would be abandoned and let you and let y'all let us know that y'all wanted that y'all wanted those signs up so that's basically what this is it is a uh, 700 foot road with one residence at the end that i believe is in the old church and there's another property owner that owns the, the majority of the road so only two pop properties impacted potentially um, on this we'll go and put a sign up at the road near the road saying that this is considered to be abandoned um, get back feedback come back to y'all let y'all know what feedback it'd be and then it would be a motion from y'all to uh, consent to the abandonment from the county's end and um, move it along to council that would go to uh, the citizen would have to take this through the courts to abandon the road and is that citizen welch or citizen nettles welch mark up oh. He had previously put a gate up and we contacted him to take the gate down to the county road and that's when he asked about abandonment of the road and citizen you have citizen nettles on here is it just across they they own basically where you see emmanuel church drive yep. they own all that to where you see the red line for the church so they own the vast majority of the road And they're in agreement with this They have not been contacted yet. So we would contact them in, in, okay. the, in the course of putting the sign up and get their feedback for y'all. We, we Could you contact them prior to putting a putting sign up? up? Sign? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'm, as long as you do that, it's always better than seeing a uh -huh. sign yeah. up. And again, that's generally that's what we did on Linhart. That's generally what yep. we did. Okay. Contact everybody before we get called. Y'all get called. I'm sorry. Yep. To the last item, the driveway at the treasurer's office. This is just a conceptual for a conversation that Mr. Hart had with us as far as looking into possibly building a driveway for the treasurer's office. Um, we had Stephen Edwards working on something else so he came and, and got us a couple shots to where I could draw something in to send to the DOT to get an encroachment permit um, looking at possibly three weeks for an encroachment permit and then construction to try to get it in before December for the uh, tax rush to get another driveway in so just want to give that to y'all for information that this is what we were looking at doing and see if y'all had any feedback we own all that property beyond the, the yellow line yes down to the down to the creek okay it's the, the yeah, hard to see but it's the red corner right there in the very top mm -hmm. of the driveway is okay but that still doesn't get you still take the back drive into the drive through correct yes That's correct. there's only one way to get into the drive yeah. mm -hmm. and this would just be leaving does this not lose parking spaces That's, no sir it just makes it a one way. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you come out of the drive through, you see the arrow, your one way will be out to the right, and then your entrance will be at the bottom left of the picture of the arrow coming in. That'll be a one way entrance in, and then a one way drive uh, into the parking lot, and then everybody will, from that area will exit out to the location. And the, the whole benefit of this is some of the concerns we have are the congestion of the two way traffic in that parking lot. People coming out of the drive through, people coming in and going out, people backing up out of the parking. Now, all of it will be funneled out to the, the new exit, uh, we'll call it. Uh, it's not even an entrance, it's an exit. So, this will alleviate some of that congestion and concern um, for safety that the residents had during those rush times. But you still, if you're going to go into the, the drive through, you'll have to come all the way around the other side of the door. And you got an estimated cost, or you'd have to. It'd be minimal, but yeah, it's labor more than anything else. It's very minimal paving and, and road work. Um, right Looking here. at budget under 10000 Under 10000 Under. Good Lord. Very good. And we're hoping to start that, um, uh, let's see, start November 6th, and we'll be done by November 30th for the real rush of tax return. 
submitted to DOT and uh, on October 13th, I believe it is, uh, Friday the drawings and everything is submitted by the 13th. Moving right along, is there any other business? I have some real quick on there. I've had a lot of concern from some of them are state roads, some of them are county roads on, you know, speeding through, especially subdivisions that are having to back out into the road on there. Is there a way for us to identify, I guess, if, if it's a county road or a state road, does it, does it necessarily matter in this with our citizens on how, is there a method that we can help speeding? I know I've talked with Sheriff Crenshaw about a few places, but is there you know, a signage or anything that we've got that... If we have critical areas where we're getting a lot of problems and there's a lot of complaints, a lot of times what we've done is we've done a um, traffic count and a, a traffic study, and we, we can put up the traffic study machine, and it's got the little flashing number, and a lot of times that in alone in, in itself is enough to slow people down a little bit and let them know, because typically what they think is a sheriff deputy is going to follow this machine once they're done. Mm -hmm. So that slows them down for a little while. We've worked with the sheriff, as you had suggested, many times on trying to patrol an area a little bit more. But we have at least tried to put those up and document the issues we were having. And a lot of times that machine itself slows them down enough uh, because they get scared. So they could, um, we we're having some issues, especially over around Sheep Farm Road, since we put that in. Some of the little cut through roads over there, the, the speed is probably 45, 50. A lot of those people, due to the new cuts, are having to back out into the road. Uh, they don't have driveways to turn around in, and I've noticed that. I was just so I guess based on these, if if it wasn't being used, and that person had their private property available for us to put, okay. You just have to contact me. And okay. We can get and I'll tell you, when I take a left from Lane Church and cut through to go back to my house, I go 25 miles an hour through there because I speed. Yeah. Your, your Another, Ultima tag was not listed by this citizen. Another uh, area of concern was where uh, Lakeview Nursing Home, that's used as a shortcut, and especially in the evening when people are hurrying back from work, um, there's been some concern by the staff at Lakeview that one of their residents might get injured one of these days. And we were talking about um, striping uh, crosswalks there. Mm -hmm. We were talking to Mr. Doug Wright with Senior Solutions about mm -hmm. crosswalking there because people do park on the other side of the street and putting up some signage mm -hmm. um, as well to try to slow people down and, and make it safe through there. So hopefully we can get some of that addressed um, by doing some of those things. But I've been talking to Mr. Doug Wright about some of the concern he has with people just walking across the street not being identified as a crosswalk. So we'll, we'll see okay. I talked to Rick about that. And before we close, Mr. Hart, if you don't mind, so it's on the record, um, I received a notice Mr. McCall will be canceling his meeting this evening since we, we ran so late. So I uh, just want to do that before you close the meeting, and then we can announce it. Well, thank you. Is there any other business? Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved.